Hey family and friends, Pastor Rob here at Community in our daily Bible reading. I hope you're enjoying this first, uh, well, second week of June now. Uh, time flies by, doesn't it? And, um, uh, and if you're traveling, thank you for logging on to be part of the daily Bible reading. And if you're in town, I hope to see you this coming Sunday. I'll be bringing the message on a really important passage because here's what we're learning about this month. We are surrounded by counterfeits. Uh, we know this is part of the scheme of the enemy to confuse us, to get our eyes off the perfect plan of God and, and the primacy, the supremacy of Jesus in our hearts. So the particular counterfeits have to do with money, sex, and power, things that um, uh, are good. Sex is good. Uh, uh, even places of power can be good. Uh, money can be a neutral, but things that can then get twisted in our lives. Uh, so there's a passage uh, in Isaiah chapter 2. I, I, yes, Isaiah chapter 2, listen, uh, starting in verse 12. Here's what it says. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty, for all that is exalted, and they will be humbled. For all the cedars of Lebanon, tall and lofty, and all the oaks of Bashan, and for all the towering mountains and all the high hills, for every lofty tower and every fortified wall for every trading ship and every stately vessel the arrogance of man will be brought low and human pride humbled the lord alone will be exalted in that day and the idols will totally disappear wow well if you're not aware of it isaiah is a prophetic book and there is this weaving out throughout the scriptures especially in the older the old testament of things that are specific for Israel, and then things that are going to be someday. Um, and this is one of those passages that, uh, that the people of God look forward to, that God is going to make all things right. And in particular, the humble get brought low, the proud and the arrogant get put in their place. I remember with such clarity, I was uh, going to be starting college. It was August, I'm going to date myself, it was August 1974. Do you know what the biggest headline was in August 1974? President, then President Nixon resigned. If you're not familiar with it, he resigned because he knew he was going to be impeached. We've heard that about presidents, haven't we? Uh, at least twice in this century, or I guess with Clinton was ni in the 90s and then Trump. But, but they were ready to impeach Nixon for the Watergate scandal. And of course, in that case, he knew he would be convicted. It was very clear. Enough Republicans joining with Democrats saying he was guilty. I mean, they, they, it, was, it was there. So he avoided all that by resigning. Well, to my knowledge, and my U.S. sister might be wrong, I don't think we'd had any president resign. It was shocking. Now, I'm a young adult. I'm ready to start college. We're thinking about possibilities. We're thinking about, you know, how, how, to, be a, you know, how to make the world a better place, and the highest person in the highest office steps down. So I clearly remember this sense that people who are in places of power are in unique places of risk. Because power is uniquely challenging. And, um, and if you were alive then or if you followed some of the history, it was a very dark time to have a president resign knowing impeachment and conviction would take place uh, and to see a person so brought low. So Isaiah reminds us that the Lord Almighty has no place for proud and arrogant people. Because in our pride and arrogance, we're essentially saying, God, I'm the one that's in control. I'm the one that's important. And we lose sight of his, his deity and his, his loftiness, his lordship. There is a verse. This theme is throughout the scripture. And, I, and I've, I've, I've wrestled with this. Because uh, pastors, like if you are in any leadership role, pastors are in leadership roles, there are risks. And things can go to our heads, and things can, it's a, it's a challenge. So Peter says this in the New Testament, chapter, 1 Peter 5, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. What is the antidote or the, 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 the way to live when, you're in, when you think about just our, our, our places of power, um, whether it be work or in positions in society or places which you have, uh, as a person, it is to humble yourself. Uh, this is not a suggestion. This is, this is a true, clear command. Humble yourself. Because only the Lord deserves to be lifted up. 
Uh, only he's the perfect one. When we, when we lift ourselves up, we know there's going to be problems. We're going to somehow mess things up. It just happens in leadership. We see it all the time in, in government and places of leadership and business and leadership. I mean, it, it, in churches as well. So I look back on that, that time in history with President Nixon resigning in humility in humiliation because his pride had led to his downfall. And here's what I want for your life and for mine. I want us to be preemptive in a, in a good way to humble ourselves. To be able to say to the Lord, this is, you know, you're the one gets lifted up. And here, here's one suggestion uh, when we think about how do we practice humility. And, and it's partly just the issue of like, don't take credit for things. I mean, if, if you did a good job, you can say thank you for the compliment. But, but, but really honor those who are doing the work or those who have made it possible. Those around you, those who work with you, those who work for you, those who went before you. Don't think you're the center of everything. Because scripture's really clear that this thing called power is a very seductive, very uh, deceiving thing. So may the Lord help us today. Maybe there's just something you need to confess in terms of where power, uh, pride in the wrong sense, that there's a good sense of pride, like I did a good job on this, but where pride, like I did it. Um, something you need to confess. Something you need to be able to say, Lord, it's not about me. Um, so may the Lord help us to truly be those people in Scripture who live a humble life. That honors God. Have a great day, everyone. Love you.